My God. It's the season finale of Breaking Bad Season 2. Are you ready for it? We'll find out. Hey, hey, quiet down. That's the Season 2 finale. Let's go. Get to it, Terry. What's going on? Oh, this man. Is... here We're here. We're here. We made it. Yes. Welcome back to the Almost Side Show, everybody. My name is Adam. I'm joined, as always, with Terry. How you doing? Hey. Doing good, doing good. Uh, time to break down this monster episode of Breaking Bad. Break down a Breaking Bad. At the finale, we got the best of season two on the way as well. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff. We finally found out what that, uh, that about to say, pink an stuffed animal in the pool was all about. It was... Like uh, the payoff. It, it, it was uh, catastrophic. I guess that maybe that's a word I could that's a, use. That's a good word for it. That is a good word for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, make sure you guys are locked in here at the Almost Sideways podcast. Check out the social media links and share your guys' thoughts on Breaking Bad Season 2. We would love to hear those on YouTube or on uh, Twitter. And we would read those out of the podcast if we get any. So anyway, Terry, are you excited for this episode? Oh, yeah. This is it's such a great season. You think about how far we've come in this season. Like the first scene of the season was Tuco going, Oh, tight, yeah, tight, baby. tight. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that was uh, th this oh, tight, tight, tight. Yeah. That was the first season of the episode of mm -hmm. the first episode of the season. I, I can say that right. Um, it feels like we've blue, been through a whole pregnancy. Bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah we, uh, right. And yeah. now we're and now we're here. Like we start we start the season with Tuco, we end the season with Gus, and everything in between. And, so, what, and the cleaner, don't forget the cleaner. We got a new guy, the cleaner. Oh, 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 oh I'm, I'm cleaner. In, oh, that guy's pretty cool so far. We'll we'll talk about it. But we are on season two, episode thirteen, ABQ. Really looking forward to that. Talking about that scene specifically. If you're watching the visual medium of the audio podcast, you would have seen the thumbnail. Anyway. Uh, let's break it down, Terry. Let's do it. Here's our synopsis. Season 2, episode 13. A, B, Q. <laughs> Such a great title because you don't know what exactly it's referring to until like the last 30 seconds of the episode. Anyways. Yeah. Here we go. How will everyone react and move forward after the tragic final scene of the last episode? The first we hear from is Jesse who is devastated at the loss of the woman he loves. He calls Walt, who calls Saul, who knows a guy. Enter Mike, who cleans up the house, takes the drugs and the money, and coaches Jesse on what to say and do. We next see Jesse in a drug den, trying to forget his pain. Walt gets him to a rehab center where he cleans up, but still blames himself for Jane's fate. Walt is playing his part well, helping Jesse without revealing he already knew what had happened. He is prepping for his surgery while Walt watching Walter Jr. and Skyler get excited as the zombie donations start rolling in. Hank is also asking for donations at the office and gets one from a local business partner named Gustavo Fring. Oh, man. Great. As Walt gets in, goes in for his surgery, he accidentally admits while going under that he might have a second cell phone after all. Skylar does some uh... investigating, and once Walt is well enough after his surgery, she leaves for the weekend so he can pack up and leave. Last, we have Jane's dad, Donald. He seems resigned and oddly stoic when confronted with his daughter's tragic end. He works with the medical team, makes arrangements for the funeral, and eventually goes back to work. It's not until he's at work that he realizes he wasn't ready to be back, as he starts getting confused and can't think straight. When you're an air traffic controller, confusion can lead to tragic consequences. Now we know where the bear, the burn, the bodies, the broken glass, and the two fires in the hills came from. And Walt was outside and witnessed it all. Adam, season two wrapped up. What do you think? Ah, oh, man. We're in season three start again? 
Yeah, right? this is getting good, man. Right? This is getting good. And I'm even more excited because I get to watch the last three episodes again because my wife had missed a couple episodes and then this episode's record. So pretty dang excited to go back and rewatch these this first time watch again. So uh, with a new set of eyes uh, for the uh, second time. So I'm pretty excited to watch those episodes again because I think those are by far three of probably the more significant episodes of the season so far. Uh, this episode brought some really interesting things out uh i spe- the the whole surgery thing when he revealed i was my mouth kind of dropped i was like oh you screwed up that's not how i thought i was going to go down as she he still she still doesn't know exactly what's going on but she knows that he, yeah, he's doing something behind her back and it's not good she knows something um but it's not cheating apparently um maybe i don't know <laughs> So somehow she, she he's getting money uh, from somebody, but it's not who not Gretchen and not Elliot and not the mom. And uh, thanks for that, by the way. Thanks um, for that. That oh, that's my favorite line of the whole episode. Thanks for that. All your yeah. mother. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> great line, especially have a disdain for each other's mothers. Um, anyway, uh, this is a really cool episode. Um, you felt every player from the, the entire show so far that the main ones, and even Saul had a little bit to do to hear, even though you didn't see him, he still he had his uh, presence felt in here too. So, with adding a new character organically, which is awesome. So, and I knew this character was going to show up eventually because how if you if not without, like I said, I haven't seen the show, but I've seen his face before especially related to um, Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. So I've seen him before. He's a recognizable face, just like, uh, you know, Gus. But uh, it, it's going to be interesting how he actually plays out because I don't know his character other than we made a presence and I, I, I dug him. So hopefully it's another character that I like. Or by cursing my wife, you like a character so much that he eventually ends up dying. So hopefully that's not the case. You're going to love Mike. Oh, well, there we go. He's kind of irresistible. It's my new Tuco, maybe. No. <laughs> and Jane and Combo. Not, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, this is why we knew you were going to love this season because there's so many great characters that come up and they all die in the season, right? You, you, yeah. We lose Combo. We lose Jane. We lose Tuco. We lose Danny Trejo. We, God, I, I hope mean, Badger wasn't on that flight back to Albuquerque. That, God, oh. Yeah. oh, wouldn't that be fucking? Oh, okay, that would. That hope not. Oh no, or 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 Pete, excuse me, Pete. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Now that this episode, I, I mentioned it last week that it it's an interesting way to end your season where you have the big moment happen the episode before the season finale so your season finale can be the fallout that propels you into what's going to happen next yeah like you can't have the revelations of this episode without what happened in episode 12 Mm -hmm. and that's what makes what makes this such a great season Mm -hmm. and then to be building towards this plane crash since the entire time yeah, since we were wondering what happened to Tuco's buddy he beat up. I mean, we, we've been wondering what all this stuff, what this bear, this pink bear half burned and an eyeball going into filtration filtration system, what all that has meant. And we finally figure it out. And yeah, it, it's just epic. Just epic. What, what would you say? Catastrophic is a great yeah. word. Great word to use for it. I, I, I halfway through that word, I thought I mispronounced it. Honestly, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you uh, you you pronounced it correct. Yay! That's why I'm here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here, folks. Get him out the way. Let's go. <laughs> Get him out of the way. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, this was a, a awesome um, episode. It does. It, it reminded me of the not so great show in the hindsight, but lost how it ends with like this big cast catastrophic, like, well, okay, I'll use that word again, but a big, like kind of big epic moment feeling like the big plane crash here. It, some of the seasons did end with like something big happening. Like then you now have your way to, you have to wait a whole entire seat, uh, almost a year before you actually see what happened to it. So luckily 
uh, I got to watch it like in a couple days. So <laughs> see what happens. Which is nice. Yeah, well, and it's it's a great way to just kind of cap off all the chaos of this season. I I think of all the seasons, you could probably say the most happens in season two. Like mm. there there's a there's a lot of chaos coming. But just to think like in totality, everything that this season had and 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 the full scope of it. I think this one ha- probably has the most, just mm-hmm. the most highlights, just the the most, you know, when you think of first season to the, or first episode to last episode, and it's such a great springboard because you leave this episode going, what's going to happen in season three? Because you've got the marriage falling apart, you've got planes exploding overhead, you've got Jesse completely on another planet, and and you've got. Gust, who no. is now you know the new boss but he's also now working closely with hank yeah I mean, uh, there's so much stuff going on and so many things that can happen it, it, it's it, it's such a great springboard yet such a great encapsulation at the same mm-hmm. time yeah it, it yeah and I, I think so much happens in this season again because that first season was cut, was cut short because of the writer strike that they had to add in a little bit of closure to what their storyline was from season one to get going into what they wanted to do with season two. Um, Cause I think we talked about all that Tuco stuff probably was supposed to wrap up by the end of season one. And instead they had to put it in the first few episodes of season two. Um, but it, it, it just makes the season just chaos and crazy and so much fun. With all the crazy chaos, the, the, it's amazing what the writers writers were still able to do. It feel, the the entire show felt really oh, tight, tight, tight. Yeah, yeah, it, it really did. Thanks, Tuco, for that. Uh, but it, it was really like really great. So, um, and you know, quite frankly, you know, it Maybe was blue, but it's the bomb. It was the bomb? Yeah, so it was the stuff. bomb. It was the bomb? All right, well, let's let's start to get into this. What was yes, the sir. best scene of this episode? Oh, Skyler versus. Walt, holy oh, it's cow! So good, it's Thank so good. That. Not a big fan of Skyler, but uh, yeah, what she steps up big time in this uh, this finale here. Uh, great lines of dialogue, and guess what, Walt? It's all true. She she found it all out pretty much, other than the whole meth and the connection to Jesse. He was never brought back up again. Which that's the only thing, oh, or, or or Saul. So those three people were never, or those two people were never brought up again at all. So she doesn't even know about Saul. So uh, the Jesse factor, she, if she would have picked up that connection, I think it would have been in a world of hurt. Like I think she, if if she somehow got to Jesse, I think it would have been like, okay, you're doing some kind of illegal activity. Um, possibly, who knows? But. We didn't get that far in that conversation. She just basically is like, "Yeah, let me just walk, leave the door, and give me some. Uh, sh- don't try to try to deny it because yeah, just let me leave leave this this room." She's got to think he's doing something illegal if he's get hundred thousand dollars paid, paid yeah. almost hundred thousand dollars out of nowhere. Something something shady has to be happening. Maybe he so, stole that Sammy Hagar guitar. Maybe. I mean, there you go. Yeah, it could be. Clapton. It was Clapton. Oh, not Hagar. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sammy Hagar no, would not have been as expensive. It, it's it's the first time you really can look at Walt and be like, someone got the better of you on every angle. Like, he has no more lies to stand on. Yep. Don't hate the player. Hate the game there, Walt. He, she outplayed she played you. the game. Yep. And she's got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, man, that drug. But it's crazy. Walt Jr. just basically, or Flynn, sorry, said, oh, he said he didn't need to bring his phone, but she heard what she heard. And Flynn did not hear, which proves that kids can't listen worth a damn. I love that. Junior, <laughs> Junior, Flynn! Get your yeah. bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's such a great, such a great scene. If we're gonna go with something else, um, 
I think everything that happens at the house at the beginning from yeah yeah with jane from jesse trying to do cpr to mike showing up and cleaning everything up to the dad showing up oh yeah um it is it's just heartbreaking every moment that takes place in that house in that building um and you can add to it when he shows up at her place, you know, sees the mural she painted on the wall, trying to pick out the right dress for her to wear in the casket. It's everything that happens in that space in this episode just tears your heart out. I thought he was going to say something to Jesse in front of that, and that lady, which is... I thought for a second that was going to happen, but also how did he, why, how did he get past the, like, I mean, I think there'd be more people like, wait, who are you? Why are you like hovering? Well, but Mike explains it. it it's, it's an overdose. Yeah. And they're, they're not going to send the police necessarily unless yeah. they're bit, they're not busy. Mm-hmm. It's just the medical team. I mean, not even any, any medics or anything like that. It's not an EMT. It's, it's the cleanup crew. Mm-hmm. We're just here to get the body and get out of here. He knew Mike knew what was coming and mm-hmm. and it shows that it what they didn't treat it like it was a big deal because it, it was obvious what had happened. Mm-hmm. It's weird that they filmed it from a stick man perf- uh, angle underneath the bed first and then up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you didn't know what was going on. And I was hoping it yeah. was <laughs> necrophilia. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, that'd be bad. Uh, but no, CPR. Uh, that's good. Trust yeah. compressions. There we go. Good job. Good job, Jesse. Perfect example of why you don't do CPR on a bed. Correct. Doesn't really yeah. do much. Yeah. It do- doesn't do much. <laughs> the yeah. give is not where it needs to be. Yeah. Okay. The Ken wins douchebag award for this episode are we, is. Are we breaking down our total? Are we doing the total, like the grand scheme of things now, or are we waiting until the end? Wait until the end. Just this episode. Just okay. up. Oh crap! I didn't write down something down for douche bag. Ooh. Well, I've got I've got Walt. Yeah, um, that makes sense because uh, everything from the way he interacts with Jesse at the beginning, knowing exactly what happened and acting like he doesn't, to oh, breathe, 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 calm, getting, take a breath, yeah, take a breath, take a breath, take a breath, to. And he doesn't react the way he does unless he already knows. Um, but everything from that to the scene with Skyler where he's caught in all of his eyes and he can just stand there and be like, you got me. He has no other response. I mean, the fact that you see so many different sides of him in this episode mm-hmm. shows just how much of a douche he is. Yeah, true. This episode. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, I'll probably put him down too. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because he does come across probably really compared to season one. He does become quite has several moments of douchebagginess. So douchebaggery, as it were. The, the other one I would say is Marie, um, dressed to the nines uh, in her purple, purple gown. Yeah. Uh, for a TV interview, she's not even gonna be in. <laughs> she just smile. Up. Smile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought All the right. paper took picked up. Might, might as well get the news. Mm, exactly. That's a good call. The Pink Man, Stick Man Award for <laughs> that the one. That one drugged out guy at the the the. Crack I out. mean that that's a that's a hard one to argue with. Yeah, because he he was the only one presumably getting it in. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm I'm going I'm going with Flynn here. Um, I mean, he's, definitely, I guess he's a celebrity, local celebrity. He now. got, yeah, he got on the news. Uh, he, His name's he, Flynn. He puts together one heck of a, one heck of a website that Lewis helped him set up the PayPal for. Um, yeah, I mean, he's pretty awesome. Yeah, and the that ladies will notice. Yeah, and he's yeah, <laughs> local celeb. His name's Flynn. I bet Lewis tries to get in. Uh, I say, hey. You know that fun guy? I set up his PayPal. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tries to play off a little bit too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Awesome. 
All right, the best new face. Hey, that's Danny Trejo Award. Tell us what you think about Mike. Yes, Mike, Jonathan Banks, the cleaner. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just walks in, basically slaps the shit out of Jesse. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, that that got 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 a new ass kick count. Yeah, I I felt (laughs) my face turn red. I was like, damn! God, yeah, it was like crazy. Uh, but yeah, he just he's like, there's no drug guns in here, is there? Is there? Think hard. Think Your hard. Freedom depends on it. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, I'm pretty sure that cops basically watch this place. So uh, he's like, doesn't seem to be anybody now. <laughs> like when they go into the, <laughs> the drug den. Uh, yeah, I like Mike a lot. I, I very deadpan, very like. Uh, so in hindsight the guy that they locked up as the quote-unquote heisenberg um earlier on in the, the season i honestly thought that was going to be mike because that's the only bald guy that kind of fit the description that i knew was also coming oh. in the show so when it wasn't mike i was like oh okay he must be doing something else so so i like know of the characters but no not what they do so i'm glad it wasn't uh, just a throwaway like cameo appearance every once in a while type of guy. So I'm glad he's probably, hopefully he shows up a little bit more. Yeah. It, I remember when he shows up in this episode, the first time I watched it, you get very Mr. Wolf from Pulp Fiction vibes. Mm. Um, Like that, that is totally, you know, when, when they need to clean up after um, Vincent shot Marvin in the face, mm. um, mm-hmm. it, it's very, very much that. And, uh, and and so that's always what I've pictured in my head when I when I've seen this episode is it's it's Harvey Keitel showing up to Quentin Tarantino's house in Pulp Fiction. Uh, the other thing I love about him is he he calls him Walter when <laughs> when they're outside the drug house and he goes, "Go home, Walter." <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> and he, I, yeah. He's he's so cool that he can not care enough to call him Walter. No one Mm. else, I mean, everyone else calls him Walt, Mr. White, or Heisenberg. And Mike just calls him Walter. Mm -hmm. It's such a, it's such a power play without it needing to be, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's just, it, it fits the character so well. I got a hypothetical question for you because we are talking, we kind of mentioned Saul a couple times now, and Mike is a Saul guy. Mm -hmm. Um, And Saul used a lot of, meta references references of movies and stuff like that do you think there's hey hey mike um walt just called i need you to take care of jesse's girl is that you think that was thrown in there the the The, lines that could have been the lines i I wouldn't i would not be surprised if he threw a little springsteen in there that way that's not spring i don't know i'm gonna shut up i don't know i think that that spring string hold on rick rick springfield springfield that's who it is i think it's rick springfield i think yes that's me uh not making a joke and then not realizing the joke before jesse's girl i mean that's like you you calling it a sammy hagar guitar when it's eric clapton so yes oh look, rick springfield rick springfield. Don't worry. is that what I'll i said yeah you're I right. think that's what I'll, i said i I'll was right it post it's okay it's <laughs> when you make the music references i i might know a little more of what i'm talking about than you just maybe this is true this is true maybe. um the gomi huh. minor character award mm. for this episode oh, gus oh right that gus, that <laughs> gus scene when he showed up i was like oh and he donated money to walt's fund oh he's gonna hold that over his head oh i, I mean the, how the again, hell is, talking about a power play here gus runs the drug ring and donates to the fun run that funds the dea i mean drop. dude is wow. a master at his at his craft right now yeah he's moving on yeah and he's been there and without them under their nose like it doesn't seem like gus is even on their radar which is crazy. He, he's so like under the radar. He's like combo, you know, not even on the radar mm-hmm. up here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just beautiful. If I'm going to go with somebody else, I mean, probably 
James dad, I, mm. he gives such an amazing performance in this episode. And it's, it, it it's not what you expect, right? Cause mm-hmm. I, last week you were talking about how, how is the dad going to react? How's the dad going to react? And then he has the phone call and he shows up and sees the ambulance and just knows. Because I think it's also part of his head. Like he kind of was expecting this to happen, but he was holding on. He knew it. He knew it was going to happen. at some And that's why I was surprised. He didn't try to go after Jesse again or try to write him out that he was the one. Look at his arm. What, what's the point? I I think that's kind of where he was at. It's like, it's what's the point. It's over. Mm -hmm. It's over. It's uh, just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's change things up a little bit. The cow house. Dumbest thing said goes to Shane Mike 21. Well, yeah, that is definitely <laughs> the most consequential thing said. Okay. When um, he starts when he <laughs> when he, sorry. he just, directs two planes <laughs> into crashing into each other. That is definitely a dumb thing that was said. Yeah. Um I I have two um, one of them was from Hank. Uh, these doctors are being paid in private islands. <laughs> they want payment in private islands. But I'm going to go with the uh, with what Walt said here. He goes simply, yo, to the, to the guy at the drug den. He goes, the first guy he pops up, he's like, yo, nope. yo, I want to say yo. That's and a good one sneak by him and just i was yeah at first it took me forever to figure out like why aren't they even at this place like wait who are they talking about oh it's jesse i was like ah okay it makes sense now i've got a couple things both are hank okay um one one pertains to hank one doesn't so it you've got hank first prize in donations it's a six it's pack. a six pack of schrader brow <laughs> home brew the silky perfection <laughs> and, but here's the funny thing it's a donation bucket how's he keeping track of who's donating like how did he That's know one. yeah it's a good yeah. point like at the end how does he know that gus put in a put in money other than the fact that he watched him do it so but i i just find it funny he's he's holding a competition even though he's not doing anything to keep track of who donated the best the second best line was gomi <laughs> saying the person who doesn't donate the most gets two. <laughs> the least. Yeah. Right. Why Gomi's so great. Gomi's awesome because he's the one guy who can dish it right back at Hank and Hank just knows he has to take it. So the other thing, dumbest thing that was said was when he was talking about combo and he says that the only thing on his rap sheet so far before this was that when he was a kid, he stole baby Jesus from a nativity scene. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah, yeah, good it's call, like, dude. That that totally sounds like something that one of Jesse's friends would have done in mm-hmm. their delinquency. So, uh, yeah, it just proves that when they had Jesse in there, they really didn't even have anybody. They didn't even know have much on Jesse then, because they would have not known his accomplices or who he talks to, who he sells to. Yeah, they didn't even realize that when they had Jesse that he was Captain Cook. True. Like going back to that. Or Badger when they had him, like his his uh, his accomplice or who's he working for? They should have figured that out. I mean, his car was found and was found. They knew it was Jesse's car. And the license plate was the captain. I mean, you can kind of start I don't know. That that apparently they, they didn't check that part out. Do you have any any uh, problems, any questions, anything outdated? Yep, I got one flaw. Yeah, that break room at that that airport looks pretty classroom to me. <laughs> <laughs> that did not look like a break room at an airport. It looked pretty cookie cutter for like a, a, a teacher's lounge. Well, air traffic control. Who knows what it's going to be? I've never been in an air traffic control tower. Or wherever they were, that wasn't even the tower. They were just watching. It looked the like they were freaking. They were where like Apollo thirteen was filmed, like in the like freaking NASA control room. It's like <laughs> what's the heck? Control. Yeah, mission control. Houston, we got a problem. Uh, Albuquerque, we got a problem. It's a good call. It's a good call. No, the whole setup of the airport, like it, it's, it just proves that he he was calling multiple flights in, but that airport was so not busy. I'm assuming he's working at the same airport Walt supposedly took off from earlier on. In this oh, yeah, season. he's working at ABQ. That's the yeah. whole point. Yeah, exactly. 
So it's like sign of the airport. You can't tell me multiple flights are really coming at the same. I don't, I don't know. There's a possibility, but still, show me the airport. But okay. I also refuse to look it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Here's here's the, here's the one thing I thought of. When uh, when Walt is fixing Skyler's bowl of cereal, mm. does do people really keep more than one type of milk in the fridge? Like he asked her, "Do you want one percent or skim?" Why? Why do you have both? The only time you do is if you're pumping, but she wasn't pumping. No. I, well, why, yeah, me, why? No. You want one percent or skim? If she wants one or the other, you only have the one, and you don't have the other. Yeah. And what? Like, what? Yeah. Skim. I'm, yeah, I maybe I'm weird, but no. One. One milk. One. At least one milk style. So. Yeah. Good call. Midlife crisis moment. Why would you pour your son's bowl of cereal too? That's another weird one. He wasn't even in the room. Yeah, well, he was pouring Skylar's at that point. But oh, I guess. Well, what, what he was, was pouring seeing... the milk for Skylar. I think. I think the milk was waiting for for Flynn. Flynn. All Good right, call. midlife crisis moment. Um, always being tired. Walt does say that to uh, his Holly. Uh, fake smiling on, on TV. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> but the best one is using a baby as an excuse. Can you turn it down? Your baby, the, your sister doesn't like that. The baby doesn't like that. So that's the one. Using the baby as the it, excuse. It's very disrupting for the baby. For the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling that's where you were going to go with that. It's a good one. Uh, where where I'm going is, uh, yes, there does come a point where time off doesn't help anymore. Mm, mm-hmm. you, you, you need, you, no matter what's going on, you need distraction. You mm-hmm. need to just get back to normal and routine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and yeah, I, I totally relate to, to Don, Donald, whatever you want to call him in that moment. Mm-hmm. LVP. My LVP is the medics because, yeah, you're right. He should have never been able to get into the room and watch them bag the body. Yeah, you may not want to be able to see see this, sir. You don't really want to be here right now. I would not have been surprised if he freaking tripped and fell because he was like really awkwardly standing on that bed. He was like, he's trying to find his footing in the scene. Mm -hmm. Horrible call. Yeah. Uh, LVP is the guy that Don was talking to. Horrible. Like that is, yeah. He is, he was probably like the worst performance in this episode, honestly. <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. Uh, but it, it also he's like, "Oh, sir, uh, hi, w- welcome back. Uh, we were thinking about you. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah." He was just yeah. He is my LVP in the episode. So. That's a good call. MVP. I've got Skyler. Oh, Skyler! She rocks it this episode. Walt Jr. would it, it would be a close second with his fake website Absolutely. and instant and, and his viral celebrity, <laughs> and then of Albuquerque only, <laughs> and then Mike the cleaner. Cool, Mike you got to you got to throw him in there too. I mean, yeah, there there's a lot of good MVPs in this episode. Yeah. Also that uh, that sweat lodge place that Jesse goes to. That's the sweat lodge, right? That's the same place he supposedly. We've oh, seen the, the Navajo sweat lodge. I mean, it's yeah. possible. Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. It has. To I, be. I would also say MVP is um uh, is Walt's pink sweater. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, and that I, could I think, be on point. I think the only reason he's wearing that thing is because it matches the bear. Oh, for that scene, yeah. For that, for that moment there, that that because why, why is he wearing a bright neon pink sweater? I mean, that is the least Walt thing we've seen. This doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, it okay. looks pretty warm outside too. Why would you wear a sweater? Yeah. And okay. we're assuming this is like almost summertime in New Mexico, based off the bad the school year. Um, yeah, yeah you can't warm. really keep track of anything time timeline wise or sure. time of year wise. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do we can here here's a question. Do we put two airplanes on the Walter White body count? No, because no, he—that was somebody else's actions. It was—it was someone else's actions, but 
his actions indirectly led to it. But was, you're right. Someone else's actions. We're gonna. We could do a. Right. We could do a in season memoriam, end of the season memoriam of the, the big players we lost. That's what we should do. Okay. So so uh, this season, the Walter White body count. Okay. Had added to it one uneaten burrito. Hmm. I remember that burrito. It looked tasty. It did look tasty. It looked really good until it was poisoned. Uh, mm. One paper towel holder. Mm, not uh, the that, that was quite the blood stain he had on it. One hot water heater. I've mm-hmm. debated, should we actually have that on there? Because the hot water heater was already dead. He just got rid of it finally. Yeah, I take but, that one. But we're, I, I, I don't know. Um, okay, take we're going to take off we're going to take off the hot water heater and in its place, um, Add rot we are board. going to put one house full of rot. Yeah, one house full of rot. <laughs> um, and uh, one back door to Jesse's house. Mm, good call. Here's and Walter. Love... <laughs> and one love of Jesse's life. Mm. R.I.P. Jane. Forever young. I want to be forever. And the Jesse ass kicked count is now oh, at yeah. seven. Oh, well, there we go. Because Mike definitely smacks the crap out of him. In he's beat it. He's been beat up the entire first season. Congratulations, Jesse. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the season now. The season-wide uh, awards here, our categories. What is the best scene of the season? Mr. Saul Goodman's intro when they first get introduced to Walter White. His intro is phenomenal. It's a good call. That is a good call. Uh, Looking back through all the ones that I've said this season. um, It's hard... I'm, it's hard to not go with Jane's death scene. Mm. Like just the the acting that happens with Walt in that moment is just amazing. If I'm gonna go with something else, I got two runners up. Um, the uh, the moment when Hank and the guys find Tortuga. On the Tortuga. Hmm. That's that's a great one. And Tio and the burrito. I mean, what did you do to my Tio? Um, yeah, that's that, a good one. That oh, that's such a great scene. And and then and leading to the end of Tuco in that moment, it's just yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. A good one. Okay. The Ken wins douchebag of the season. Yeah, well, it is, should be Ken. Um, Ken win. No, wait, that's that no, was that's first season, season one. Yeah. Oh, season one, the D bag of the, the season. I'm I'm gonna go with Walt. Okay, so Walt does have a lot of times where he gets in his own way and thinks he knows best. I'm looking at you four days out, thinking of you this this season. So Walt has to be my my pick for you know the one of the biggest douchebags of the season. Yeah, Ed, that's a good one. I, if there's if you're gonna go with someone else, um, I had Walt down too. But if you're gonna go with someone else, you got to go with Marie. Mm-hmm. Yep. As the whole shoplifting thing happens this season, and her mm. refusing to admit to it. Dang, that was this season. That was I... this season. Holy cow! There is a lot of. I totally kind of forgot about that. I thought that was a lot. <laughs> that was the first season. Wow! Yeah, that's. Yeah, you that's, also have you also have the the scene where Skyler confronts Hank about it. Mm. I think that was this season, wasn't it? At least the fallout from it was this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The initial the initial one. Um, the initial shoplifting might have been last season. Oh, no, I'm not sure. But Marie was also picked for our uh, douchebag area too. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, she's been she's been douchebagged several times throughout this the, the season. 
by both of us. Mm-hmm. The uh, pink man, stick man of the season goes to. Uh, go with Jesse because he got it in and he also handled, he likes hardwood floors and he actually had, he handled a piece of uh, wood in his hand too. So there's a couple times. So Jesse, Jesse or Jay, I think that's good, good options. I, I think that that's, that's really the, the answer here, but if I'm going to go with my, my favorite answer for this question of the season, it has to be the makeshift antenna on Jesse's phone in the desert. Um, made of a foot of tin foil it that that moment that I, rant that I went on said that yeah was that was such a weird episode that we we had a weird episode it's a great episode we had a weird episode that yeah, we had a lot of innuendos <laughs> with an antenna i remember that now good call that i went end. on for like a minute long rant about why it was why it was a stick man so if we're gonna go with something yeah jesse's like that call and the Mm-hmm. The foil antenna. Yeah, good call. Um, the best new face of the season. Of the season. On the premises. A lot, a lot of options here. There are a lot of options. <laughs> you can go with Jane, say mm-hmm. Gus, Mike, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Danny Treos, Tortuga. You can, see that, you can see that guy that got Badger arrested. Yeah, DJ Qualls. Uh, yeah, DJ Qualls. Uh, but I will say, oh, Saul Goodman's also in that list too. Uh, yeah, Saul. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna say uh, Jane here uh, because this is the one that I. It, it definitely is such a great uh, portrayal by Kristen Ritter here. And when she popped up, I was like, oh, I, I yes, it's her. Yes, that's awesome. I didn't even know she was in this show. And then Masters broke my heart. Masters broke my heart. But yeah, she was awesome in this. Uh, going to be missed. It'd be interesting to see if there's like any flashbacks or anything like that with her. Mm. Um, but as of now, the show hasn't really done any flash. Well, it's done a couple flashbacks. So who knows? But be very yeah. interesting to see. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. How that goes yeah that's a great call mm-hmm. you're right there's a long list of people that you could mm-hmm. that you could put on this I'm probably forgetting somebody um, too so i'm gonna go with one you forgot Ding. Ding. oh my Ding. god go with the tio oh uh, good call tio salamanca i mean what a Ooh. what a crazy unique amazing character and Dude, does that guy I mean, come back? Because he's still out man, there. Man, this guy, this guy's like, oh gee, he's not gonna roll on anybody. Anybody home? Um, yeah. <laughs> and he defecates on demand. Holy cow! Yeah, that's a good I call. know. <laughs> I know. Dude, I that, that that's kind of dude. That he would be, is. I he is the that most, guy comes back. Such a unique character in in such yeah, just just. Awesome. Who would have thought a kid's bicycle bell would be so intimidating? Well, it's not even a bicycle right. bell. It's just like a little bell for mm-hmm. like a counter of the yeah. store. Yeah, good call. The, I like that call. The, That's a good one. The Gomi Minor character of the season. Gosh, dang it, man. This is crazy. Um, there's a couple other good ones here that we could say. Um, you could do that. Um, the young kid from that one episode um, at the, the house that the guy gets his sm- mudge or whatever midge smudge smudge. smudge yeah smudge whatever his name is he became a spudge spooge and his skink yeah <laughs> yeah um, there's another could've... one that we could have mentioned was um was oh. uh dale dickie yeah dickie yeah. yeah yeah good call that's yeah that's a great one um i want to say combo here but i also at the same time want to say somebody different because i don't want to feel like i'm pretty obvious with a lot of them but he was awesome. A badger, also really good here too for for minor character, always showing up late to the party. Welcome to the party, pal, as it were. Um, for minor character, uh, the character of Flynn would be up there probably, but he's kind of main, uh, main not character. Well, your butt, Flynn. Flynn, yeah, specifically Flynn. When he oh, goes another best new face is Lewis because we forgot to mention oh, him yeah. because it was 
Caleb Landry Jones. This is true. Good call. Good call. Uh, mine. We could say Tuco technically because he technically was a minor. I had Tuco down. I mean, he's in what two or three episodes the entire season. Yeah, that's a great call. We gotta, we gotta put Tuco down there. Yeah, definitely. Tight, tight, tight. Yeah. Uh, we need, we're gonna need, we're gonna run out of our freaking buttons. We're gonna need to get some new ones pretty soon. Uh, yeah, Tuco is a good call. Um, if we were to do any other characters, I, I definitely think Combo is definitely there the way he went out and basically they shed some more light on him. But the baby Jesus thing was all was also pretty hilarious there too. Uh, and also he's like, it's a bona fide stick man, dude. He was trying to, he was getting in, he was like selling to the ladies. He was hopefully to score more than just money. Uh, but yeah, anyway, yeah, good call. Yeah. Yeah, Tuco Tuco oh. is what I have written down, but you're right. There's so many you can go with. You can go with Tortuga. Yeah. You can go with um all, all the ones we mentioned in Best New I Face. think that now that I'm looking back on this, se- this ep- season, DJ Qualls is like the high war for that one episode because he matches Badger's energy perfectly. He's such a high war. Like if you're trying to match that guy's energy, it's it's, it's got to be DJ Qualls only, right? I, I hate people that you know violate the Constitution of America. <laughs> <laughs> Constitution of America. Uh, yeah that that is a great call. That is a great call. I think yeah. someone someone should go with him. Someone should go with him. Yeah. And I mean, we didn't mention Gomi, and Gomi is the one that the that the award. award's named after. But he's just always around and awesome in the like ten seconds of screen time he has. Yeah, true. Okay. The cow house dumbest thing said of the season. <laughs> the Constitution of America has to be one that we definitely have reference <laughs> quite the most is awesome. Um try to think what else ones I think. Day off, we're on call. Is New Zealand in New Zealand? New Zealand is New Zealand. New, New Zealand's yeah. New Zealand. That's a great one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and Oh, did you catch there's just this minor little moment where you get a little bit of where Jane came from? Because he says that there's that line from the last episode that Arizona. New Zealand's New Zealand. Oh, yeah. Um, when the dad is going through the dresses and trying to find what to get. It's like everything's just black and gray. There's no yellow. Oh, there's a there's a blue. It's not royal blue. It's 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 blue. Blue's blue. And it's oh, like man. that's why she says it. It's blue, something blue. her dad has always said. It's a good call. I didn't pick up on that. That's really good. Yeah. Oh, like again, just makes it that much more heartbreaking. Okay. So uh I have a couple more. I, I'm looking okay, I'm looking through all the ones I've said this season so far um from episode one mm-hmm. it's a barrel it rolls oh yes that's a great one um let's see here uh chili powder when he's trying to get him to to snort the rice in mm-hmm. and he says that there's chili powder in it uh that's a dumb thing that was said uh let's see here um <laughs> badger you're like Willy Wonka, and I just got a golden ticket. <laughs> Good one. Um, let's see here. Uh, it's pretty hectic out there, female wise. There's the best. There's the best minor character. Um, the the guy from that he used to be in the band with, the Thalases. The yeah. Thalases. That's the best minor character. That's the best minor character. What was the name of the band? Um. Oh yeah, that's a <laughs> twat hammer. Twat hammer. Yeah. Do we? How do we not make mention that? Had you, you mentioned that in like best fictional bands? That, that, that was a twat. Oh yeah, that we should have. Um, when he said his name was Jesse Jackson, that was a dumb thing that was said. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Man, I got no time for spelling. Um, Skinny Pete. Yeah. That's a that's a dumb thing said. Uh, I got a. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, epileptic whorehouse that's a good one <laughs> uh, I like people that don't abuse the constitution yeah. um uh, uh, vagina paintings yeah you brought a meth lab to the airport you brought a meth- <laughs> 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 
That's just the like, dumbest thing done. And yeah. it's not even the dumbest thing said. It's just the dumbest thing done. Uh, no, what's it taste like when he freaking siphons the gas? Oh, yeah. Uh, Funyuns are awesome. It's pretty dumb. I was a kid. It was like four years ago. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Kanga Man. Kanga Man does whatever a Kanga Man does. That's, that's something you said. Well, Kanga Man's dumb. The one that I think has to take the cake as my dumbest thing said of the season. Oh, wire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good call. I like it. Go with that one. Oh, oh, you were thinking. You were thinking. Ah, that's you thinking. Found the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's you thinking. You were thinking. <laughs> good call. Oh, beautiful. The midlife crisis moment of the season. The Schrader brow. Schrader brow. <laughs> oh, drink just... making skills. He's got great skills. He's got drink making skills. Uh, just leave me alone with my hobby. And Schrader brow. Such a midlife crisis right. moment that no one wants it. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's see here. <laughs> Beers at 11 a.m. as long as someone else is buying. That was one thing I had written down. Um, it's like that was one of the best things you wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Man, they're what hiring just anyone it? nowadays. Just hiring anyone. Now. That's a great one, too. <laughs> just leave me alone with my beer slash hobby. That's a, yeah. All the time. Um, that, uh, all the time, Walt's like worrying about the energy savings and the roaming fees and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Raisin Brand. This is it. Raisin Brand is not the same as Raisin Brand Crunch. That's my midlife crisis moment of the episode. The funny yeah. thing is, is it was said by the 16-year-old. That is so true. I don't know how much of a midlife crisis it is, but um his world was yeah. Um Walt's <laughs> Converse. He wore Converse shoes for some reason. Oh yeah. Way back when. Mm-hmm. It's a good call. Let's see. Raisin Bran is different than Raisin Bran Crunch. But then they <laughs> ended up eating Cheerios, which is also an old person cereal. That's true, too. But I also like Raisin Bran because you can dress it up but with like like sugar and stuff. It's nice. <laughs> uh, and baby proofing. I think that's another good one. It's a good one we have to baby mention. Yeah. Good call. Which, oh, okay. No, I got it. I got it. The stick man of the season. Another one we have to talk about. Or... I mean, he could be sick man, could be a minor character. Ted Beneke. We haven't mentioned him yet. There's a reason he why has, we haven't mentioned him. He has to be mentioned in the, because uh, the, the other one I just came across in the midlife crisis is. Oh, yeah. No one went to leave. That's my cue. No one went to leave. No one went It's time to leave. Oh. Yeah. Hi, Ted. <laughs> oh, you pulled the Beneke. You knew when to let. You pulled the Beneke. You knew when to leave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul the Beneke. I like it. All right. Yeah. LVP of the season. Uh, the low hanging fruit here is addiction, but because there's a couple episodes that deal with addiction this year, the pe mm -hmm. peekaboo and yeah, this other one, yeah, uh, with Jane. That's a that's one that it's a bummer, man. It's a bummer, but yeah, addiction has to be the LVP here. That's a good one. That is a good one. Um, let's see here. Uh, what else could we go with? I mean that that's that that really is the one. Um, uh, the guys who used a kid to kill Combo, that's another another one. He's also one <laughs> that I wrote down. Uh, Jesse's egg cracking skills, I think that is definitely one that needs to be considered. Jesse's um, directions. Jesse's direction skills. Um, yeah. Let's see. Here. Um, American Express, the Sky Mall Magazine, yeah, the 2008 Economy, Sky Mall Magazine, that's a good one, yeah, Sky Mall, Tortuga, yeah, we'll go with that one. All, all the, all the douchebags that Hank had to work with on the the, uh, the task force. That is true. Oh, by the way, did you notice this little detail that um, when they showed Hank sitting at his desk, he had. The little statue of the 
of the patron saint of oh yeah like, cartels or whatever it was um he had it on his desk to call oh your enemy mvp of the season all right the the obvious answer is the guy who knows the guy who knows the guy who knows the guy it's gonna be sal, sal. it's gotta be saul goodman yeah, yeah. I, that's what i was thinking I too. Sal. saul saul goodman i always say sal for some reason i don't know I don't know what it's my accent. Sorry, Canadian. <laughs> yo, anyway, <laughs> so Saul Goodman is the MVP here. But if we, uh, uh if we aren't um, picking him, we got to go with Rot. I think that's my. F- <laughs> we got Rot. We got Rot. <laughs> the uh, best line. That's got to be one of the dumbest things. No, no. We got it's Rot. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, MVP. We finally got a baby. Hell yeah, we got a baby. A baby. That's a great call. We and finally got her. We baby. Even uh, though, like, even though Skyler though rushing out of the house with the lightest baby care I've ever seen, just slinging it around the house. It's, sling, it's going up and uh, slinging into the car. She basically threw it in there. Yeah, that's that baby was light. It's almost as bad as American Sniper's baby. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, uh, my let's see here. The switch that Walt has at the, the hardware store too switched into Heisenberg oh, right away. Yeah, Heisenberg mode is a good MVP. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going. Uh, we we can go with uh, Low Jack. Um, <laughs> we can go with uh, Fugue States. Oh no, um, well, we that 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 got debunked. That's an LVP now. It's true. That that is an LVP now. It's moved. Um, Gus. Uh, Gus could be considered an MVP. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, but I, I could also say David Kilkelly, the guy who took the fall as Heisenberg. Yeah, that's fake Mike. Yeah, fake prison Mike. Mike. No, prison Mike. <laughs> prison Mike. <laughs> Yo, I'm prison Mike. <laughs> that's beautiful that oh, is beautiful that's great. that's great um uh, actually, no so my i forgot my minor character I, I i forget who i said already but i said somebody but i i uh it's got to go with that that manager at the chicken restaurant like she's just awesome she's she is awesome, awesome. yeah she i gotta awesome. mention her she's awesome and my uh my least favorite character was that another do- underrated douchebag is that old lady reading out the bill to walt at the place the, the, with the fact yeah that's another yeah another lvp is uh jesse's parents that kicked him out yeah, and then rat it yeah or the or the movers that took the phone but yeah. left the ice trays uh don't <laughs> say the, tom the Ar- ice trays don't say the tom arnold joke okay Whew. the true <laughs> lies okay anyway go find it for yourself all right yeah. so what's next we have we're we're moving on to season three. What are we gonna run into with season three? What do you think? Where are we going next? It's a lot of references for the cartel. It's gotta be something. Maybe. Um see, I can't even fall back on like, oh, this person's coming up soon because they've got kind of already been a, appeared. There's gotta be somebody that I don't know of. Right. Who knows? Um, I want to see more Gus. There's got to be more Gus now. This is where this. How many more? How many seasons are this? This is show five. Five. Mm. And the last season is supersized. It was a it was a split part one, yeah. part two season. So it's two eight episode parts. So it's a 16 episode season. to end. Mm. Plus El Camino. Um, Plus El Camino. OK, so. It won't be a movie, so we know it's not Camino. Um, no, uh, so what's coming in season three? Definitely more Mike. Obviously, I want to see more of Saul and their lawn uh, laundering, laundering. Yeah, uh, and uh, more Gus to see that because there has to be some clash with Heisenberg and Gus now because Gus kind of knows the secret there as well. Uh, and eventually, I guess this is the season where you have to reveal that you're, you know you are making a bunch of drugs but at the same time though you have to think that if she knows she's alive now she'll be a liability now and they can go she could get in trouble for knowing 
Argh, I want Skylar to know. Like at the same time, because get off Walt's butt, because he's trying to do it for. Oh, but Walt's kind of been an asshole, though. I don't know. He's such a conflicting character because you, you, you're watching him, and then you're at the same time. It's like you're a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> Come down. She's pregnant for 19 years. Come, calm down. 19. I mean, you got you got Skylar's doing the right thing right now. She is. She's standing up for herself, and she's but actually. The, but does it hold? Yeah, well, it didn't really. The last argument didn't really hold because she kind of forgot it, and then you know, they never touched on it again. Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, they 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 got to reveal it. I think I think it's there's a there has to be a conversation between them. And he's gonna have to reveal it. Uh, Jesse's gonna come back and as well, and they're gonna uh, dang their operation will have to grow as well. Oh, uh, there's so many possibilities. It's just so hard to know because we, we just had a big plane crash. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hard part is the plane crash is throwing me off i mean is there any fallout oh. from that oh yes what happens if they open up that pink bear and come to find out it wasn't a kid's bear after all it actually had some blue stuff in it oh and it, was, it was a smuggle bear it was a smuggle bear not a snuggle bear but a smuggle bear yeah the hottest toy for christmas 2024 the smuggle bear or 2023 <laughs> anyway yeah oh that'd be interesting yeah, we only time will tell. That's crazy. Yeah, Whew. I just pray that badger's not on that flight. We need more badger in our lives. Everyone needs more badger in their lives. Yes. All right. You got some great theories. You've got no, some great uh, theories. It's more scattered thoughts, really. But you've got some great scattered thoughts. <laughs> okay. Okay. <Thank laughs> right on. All right, I think that's it. Well, that wasn't as tight, tight, tight as we wanted it to be, but we uh, we got it done. Uh, Yay! We, uh, we got it done. Um, the gig is up. Uh, the show is up for this season. And that means our ep- time here on the podcast is also up. Really looking forward to season three. Until next time. Breakdown Karen, of Breaking Bad. And Adam are out. Sit and spin. 